thanks Mizen for sponsoring this video. One dollar, this is all I have. I have good connection with my meat dealer, but the question is, can he sell me a brisket for one dollar? Yo, Emilio, what's up? <laughs> this is my man right here. What's hey, up, man? I have a question for you. Go ahead. I got one dollar. That's uh -huh. all I got. I need a brisket. Can you sell me a brisket for a dollar? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, Emilio. Hook me up, bro. Where do you see a brisket for a dollar? <laughs> if there's anybody that can do it, it's you. One dollar. Come on, Emilio. Listen. Come on. I have a sample. Goes to take to a customer. Okay. I'm going to sell it to you for a dollar. So oh. we'll make it a dollar brisket. Ah! <laughs> Just because we're friends, okay? Just because we're friends. One dollar brisket, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, it's a big boy too. Let's go. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm about to do with it. That's why I need it to be a dollar, Emilio. Whatever it is, I hope it's worth it. I, I hope so too. You're the man. Oh, oh, it's a heavy one too. How many pounds? It's 18 pounds. 18 pounds. I love it. Thank you, my brother. You're the man. That's why I got a meat dealer, everybody. Let's go cook this thing right now. Thanks, Emilio. Take care. And this is what a dollar brisket looks like. Now there's no way you're gonna be able to find one dollar brisket anywhere. However, if you have great connections with your meat dealer, you can get as lucky as I just did. And as you can see, this is not a high grade brisket. And the first thing to do like every brisket is to start the trimming. You see this part right here? They used hot water to vacuum pack it. It's basically cooked brisket. So it is important to trim it all out. And as you can see, as I did, man, this thing has almost no intramuscular fat. There are a few things that I look for to make my brisket perfect. The first one is to have a good ratio of fat and meat. The point which is the fattiest part of the brisket, I always like to remove most of the external fat. However, since this brisket is a select, I'm gonna leave quite a bit. The flat usually has almost no intramuscular fat, so I always leave a quarter inch. But on this one, I'm gonna leave a little bit extra. When I flip it around, I just like to trim the things that will not render. Talking about rendering, I am leaving more fat on this brisket than I ever did in any other I cooked. To ensure that the fat will render properly and most importantly get my season to penetrate, I went ahead and score it. And my thought is for a select brisket, this is a must. Because once I was done, check it out. Yeah, this is something I've never done to a brisket. Now the next thing to do is to get it seasoned. So for that, I transfer to a tray because things are about to get a little messy. You see, you gotta make sure your seasoning will stick. So adding a binder is a must for this type of brisket. And yellow mustard has proven itself to be a good one. So after rubbing both sides with it, I went ahead and started seasoning with a good amount of salt. Remember, this is a humongous piece of meat, so make sure you season this thing well. And once I was happy with the salt, I went ahead and finished with black pepper. As you know, I'm gonna be steaming this brisket with wine, so I don't want to mask with any other flavor. But now that we got the brisket ready, it was perfect because it allows me time to go ahead and make an awesome side dish. And these are perfect as appetizers or a side dish to any type of meat. And and to make them it's super easy and here's how. The first thing is to crispen up some bacon. Always remember to keep it under low heat whenever you're cooking bacon. You don't want them to go too quickly if not the fat will not render. Talking about rendering, when you see them bubbling up like this, it's a sign that the fat has rendered enough. Mix it around to make sure that it's perfectly the way you like it and reserve the bacon fat. Once I was done, I was left with perfectly crispy bacons. Now that is gonna go into our filling. Talking about filling, everything just goes into the food processor. I started with cream cheese, followed by the bacon we just cooked, green onions, garlic paste, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, a pinch of salt, and freshly ground black pepper. Now blend everything on high, because this is what you should be left with. Not the most appetizing look, but I guarantee you it is extremely flavorful. It's not fully done yet, as now we need to wrap this up on this. One tongue wrappers. There are countless shapes that you can make. I'm just gonna show you some of my favorites. The first thing is to wet all edges, add a little bit of filling right in the middle, and tighten up the corners just like this. Check it out. One of the most traditionals you see in all Chinese restaurants. Here's another style. Close it up making a triangle, and once you have done so, twist it around and connect both ends. And there you have it, a very interesting shape. Once I was done, take a look. They are now ready to be fried. Talking about that, to do that it's super easy. You can use a very fancy oil like duck fat, or just keep it in budget with vegetable oil. You want to fry them up at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until they are golden brown. Just make sure not to overdo it, because this is what you're looking for. 
a nice crispy crust and a golden brown exterior. As you saw it, these are super easy to make and most importantly, absolutely delicious. And it will be the perfect marriage for that $1 brisket. Talking about that, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and cook it. First, I'm gonna be smoking it for four hours. That means I'll be setting my smoker at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna be using some wine to steam it. For that, I'll be using this very special container, which if you want one, check out the description down below. I'm gonna be steaming it till it's fully cooked. For exact time, I'll be letting you know real shortly, as the only thing left to do is to go ahead and cook it. So now I say it is enough talking and it is time to steam this $1 brisket, so let's do it. Before moving forward, I want to thank today's sponsor, Misen. Misen's mission is to inspire and enable great cooking. And what better way to get inspired than with beautiful tools like this one? Take a look at this. With Misen Dutch Oven, you get a quality Dutch oven without the outrageous price tag. It costs almost half as much as the pricier Dutch oven. And the Misen Dutch Oven has been shown to outperform even the most expensive Dutch ovens. When subjected to heavy wear and tear, the competition cracked and broke under pressure. While Misen shows zero signs of wear or cracks in the enamel. Misen uses robots to spray four layers of premium enamel. By being sprayed over dipped. Misen ensures evenness in the enamel of the Dutch oven down to 0.2 millimeters. And with Misen's 4.5 millimeter cast iron core, you get a Dutch oven designed for better heat retention than those overpriced options. This is pretty convenient. It comes with two different lid options. You get the grill lid which can be used as a grill panel on any stove or you can pick the traditional lid. They also offer silicone lid which is handy for when you need the Dutch oven and the grill pan at the same time. When stored, you can put it between the lid and the Dutch oven to prevent chips or damage. Click the link in the description and use my promo code GOOGLEFOODS for 20% off your first order. It's simple, use promo code GOOGLEFOODS for 20% of your first order. Thank you Mizen for sponsoring this video, now let's get right back to it. Alright everybody, here we have our beautiful brisket. Are you hungry Omo? I'm hungry to go, this thing's smelling good. Smells phenomenal everybody and that's a lot. Good. That's oh, you like lot. that, my little appetizer, my mom? Yeah, that's a little appetizer. But I don't care I'm about the appetizer, I care about the brisket. <laughs> that's not how things work. <laughs> By the way, this is an experiment brisket. The last experiment with the brisket was good. Exactly. Remember when we did it with the beer? With the beer, yeah. When we really did good. it with the beer, my mom, they went ahead really and good. requested this experiment. So this is 100% oh your request, so It's everybody. your fault. Uh, if it's bad, yes, not my fault, <laughs> not my idea. Not my idea, I already, I'm already getting myself out of the conversation. Uh, we're gonna have a serious talk if this thing is not good. <laughs> so here's the deal, last time was Wagyu brisket. Now this one is a dollar brisket. I pay one dollar for it. A dollar, a dollar brisket. brisket by you. They saw it in the video. I, I know it's hard to believe, but it actually happened. Uh, okay. One dollar. That's how much I paid for it. I don't know if it cost a dollar, but I paid a okay, dollar. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Like, does it cost a dollar or Emilio sold you for a dollar? Emilio sold you. How did you okay. know that was Emilio? Because <laughs> the Emilio only person, is that... the only meat dealer who's going to give you the discount. So, it is not a Wagyu brisket. Get your hopes way down, yeah, all right? They're already crashing. Trust me. <laughs> exactly. So, we want to know if it's good, bad, or ugly. And at the same time, it is a little bit of experiment. So, let's go okay. for it. You ready? What are you talking about? We're going to go for this. Oh, you want to go? It's an appetizer. That's, you know, I made it's it. to open up your appetite. Exactly. I made it, so we'll go ahead and we'll try it. This is a little wonton with bacon and cream cheese spread, oh Mama. God. I know, right? That's already <laughs> sounding amazing. Enough. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like a little flavor bomb. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I didn't put much salt. It's because it has Worcestershire sauce and other things wow. and the bacon. So it's very salty, very creamy, extremely mm -hmm. creamy. Mama, what do you like? What do you think? Oh, you're going for another one. I'm going for another one. I can tell Mama I like it already. You know what? Let's call this what it is. What is it, Mama? This is a barbecue crab ragu. That's right, barbecue. <laughs> so good. But I want to try the brisket. Are you ready? I'll tell you one thing. This brisket, 
Man. Before we try it, I must give you guys a huge warning. It's falling this, apart. Exactly. It's falling apart. This method is phenomenal, everybody. It cooks the brisket a lot faster than any other brisket. It took me only five hours to cook the whole thing, Mamao. Man. I smoked it for four hours and I steamed it for one hour. By the way, I'm already telling you, I steamed it, it Mamao. It might, it might be a little overcooked. Almost. Yeah. It is. Because it's that was falling. my surprise. It's a little bit over, I'll be honest, okay? And that's because I was not expecting to only take one hour. I thought it was going to take three hours, four hours, you know, uh -huh. but only one hour. And when I took uh -huh. it out, I probed it. It was like butter. That's how good this method is. It, so, it is really soft. Mm -hmm. Just from yeah. I mean, look, with the fork. It's... We're going to do the, you know, the pull test, whatever, and then to take it apart, I mean, check it out, everybody. There's zero resistance. The pull test, you already know, you know what I mean? It's slightly overcooked. Yeah. Slightly, Slight. not too it's much. Not gonna, it's not gonna damage the meat. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's... you're cheating! Finger licking good, You're right? cheating! Mm -hmm. I had to, my dear, that dirty. Okay, <laughs> enough. Are you ready, Mama? Let's go. All right, let's try I'm this. waiting here for you, man. You're <laughs> talking too much, let's All go. All right, enough. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Wow. That's good. It's not Wagyu. It's not a Wagyu. Yeah. Mm. What a nice flavor, and it's still juicy, even though it's a little overcooked. It's yeah. juicy. Mm. You used red wine. I used the red wine. Yeah. Damn, mama, it's good. It's not because I know wine. It's because I know the red wine is a little bit sweeter. Mm. So it has a little hint of a sweetness on it. It is not an overwhelming amount of alcohol. No, right, mama? No, 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 at all, at all. Like you can barely tell. You can barely tell. You gotta pay extreme attention. It's more on the bark. That's mm -hmm. why you're coming yeah. in. Also, the smell is different on the brisket. It is. It de definitely. And at the out. same time, you see, it smells different. It feels different. It tastes slightly different, but it does not by any means make it bad or taste like alcohol. Mm. It just tasted different. Yep. That's how I describe it. So the method works very well. Slightly overcooked, just a tiny bit, but at the same time, very delicious. A lot of people like falling apart, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's exactly That's what that exactly is. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, these are the results. I highly recommend giving a try to this method. It works extremely well. Just make sure you get a nice, big, large steamer. I'm gonna put a link on the description of mine so that you can get the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything's always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. This is so good. I haven't even gone for back for the appetizer. Yeah, no, usually you I'm crush the appetizer. How, I'm, I'm forgetting how to speak English. <laughs> That's how good this That's thing is. That's how good it is. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys on the next one. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Yeah.